Welcome back to another cooking video. I'm Chef Devo and today I'm gonna to teach you how to make sushi rice in a pot. Because through the last couple of years, a lot of you have commented on my videos asking how do you cook sushi rice in a pot or pan because you don't have one of these rice cookers. And apparently I have too many rice cookers for my own good. Anyway, so it's very important to know how to cook sushi rice in a pot or pan, just like this one, because then you don't rely on these machines and when these machines break, you can always fall back on a reliable pot or pan to know how to make sushi rice and make some awesome sushi. All right, so let's get going. This is how you do it. So to start with, you take some sushi rice, which is short grain rice from Japan, uh, Japonica strain, it's very sticky rice. And I'm just gonna have 500 milliliters of this stuff and I'm gonna use a sieve and a bowl to clean it. First, I'm gonna start with the sieve. Just put the rice into the sieve and then pour water over it nice and gently. And to make sure that it's gently, you just put your hand in between the water and the rice so you can intercept the stream and slow it down. Because you wanna be very, very delicate with your rice and you don't wanna break any of the rice grains. Now, as you can see, as I'm rinsing it, there's a little bit of water on the bottom that's cloudy, white, and this is all the starch being released from when the rice was milled. Now it's very important to get this stuff straight out of it. That's why I use a sieve at the start. Okay, so once you've rinsed it and it becomes clear, just like this, then you move over to the bowl washing. So for this, I'm just gonna get my bowl, put all the rice into the bowl, and now I'm gonna fill it up with water, but make sure to let the water hit the side of the bowl and not directly the rice. And then I'm just gonna start washing it just like this with the hand. Okay, now the technique's very simple. You just grab the rice and let go, grab the rice and let go, and not very hard. It's just, the idea is to get the rice grains to rub on each other and clean themselves. Okay, and then also you can just put your hand in and shake, just like this. And then you just keep doing this until water becomes nice and cloudy white. Okay, at this point, you just pour it out just like this. Make sure you don't let any rice fall out. And then you add some more water again. And again, hitting the side of the bowl so it doesn't hit the rice directly. Because if you hit the rice directly and break the rice grains, what happens is they break open and more starch release into the water. And this will just continue the washing process. Or at worst, you'll have starch in your cook and then it'll just be very, very overly sticky rice and more like mushy. So you don't want that to happen. Also, one thing to know is the water I'm using is ice cold. Do not use warm water. That is very, very important. Now just continuously do this and you'll have to do it about seven to eight times. So just fill it up, clean it, make it milky and then drop out the water. And as you keep going, the water will become less and less milky every time until it should be clear at the end of the washing cycle. Okay. Here we go, just again pour out. Oop, I'm letting a couple of rice grains out by accident. Okay, so just keep rinsing it. Now as you can see, it's much more clear now. And just keep doing it and keep moving it and make sure you're not too rough on the rice because otherwise, like I said, they'll just break and it'll just become cloudy and starchy, which is not good. Okay, so at this point, I think it's clean enough. And I'm just gonna pour it out into a sieve again for one last rinse and then I'm just gonna let it all grain. Okay, so here I'm just going to rinse it again. Just to make sure some last particles just flow out. Okay, great. And now just put it in a bowl and let all the water drain out nice and slowly. Once it's fully drained out, you add it into your cooking pot, just like this. And then you add 1.2 times the amount of water that you did rice. So I use 500 milliliters of rice. I'm gonna add 600 milliliters of water. And then I'm just gonna let it rest and let the water get soaked into the rice. Now it'll turn from a light white to a strong opaque white. And that'll take about 30 minutes and it depends slightly in what kind of climate you're in. In a colder climate, it'll take a little bit longer. In a hotter climate, it'll take a little bit less. Okay, so now to make the rice seasoning, which is a vinegar mix. And for this, you're just gonna take 200 grams of rice vinegar and pour it into a container. Then add 90 grams of sugar and 20 grams of salt.
and then you take some kombu seaweed, which is a special dried uh, sort of kelp seaweed, that you just tear up and you just place it inside. And you just want to let the sugar and salt dissolve into the vinegar and the kombu will infuse into the mix, but it'll take time. So I would suggest you make this at least two to three days beforehand. I usually make a big batch and then just use it whenever I need it. And this will last for a very long time. It doesn't really have an expiration date because you just have sugar and salt and vinegar. So that's like limitless. Okay, so now to cook the rice, I'm just gonna put the lid onto it. I'm gonna increase the heat to medium. And you wanna keep the lid on and leave it for nine minutes. Okay, after nine minutes and you keep the lid on during the entire process, you increase the heat to maximum. And then you cook it for a further four minutes. And after four minutes, it will have been cooking for 13 minutes total. And then you turn it off, leave it on the stove, and do not take the lid off. And after a further 15 minutes of letting it cool, then you can take the lid off, and you have perfectly cooked sushi rice, just like this. And then you just wanna scoop it out with a paddle, just like this. And make sure you take only 90% of the top of the sushi rice and leave the bottom 10% because the bottom 10% will be overcooked and most of the time crispy and stuck to the bottom of the pan. And you don't want crispy rice inside your sushi rice. Okay, so once you've got all of it, then it's time to add the rice vinegar mix. But first, let's just check out the paddle. You see, this is a non-stick paddle and none of the rice sticks to it. You can also have wooden paddles like this, but sometimes rice will stick to it. I like the non-stick for the best. All right, so now I'm just gonna take the sushi rice vinegar mix I made before. I'm gonna add it over the sushi rice, but first hitting the paddle and spread it around just like this. All right, so I've added 20% of the volume of the uncooked sushi rice. So if I have 500 milliliters of rice, I use 100 milliliters of rice vinegar mix. And now here I'm just gonna cut the sushi rice and separate it. Now the goal here is to not damage any of the sushi rice grains, but just to separate them enough so the rice vinegar mix can coat them all evenly just like this okay and once you've evenly spread it all out then it's time to fan it i'm just going to use the lid of the topware box and i'm just going to fan it until it becomes body temperature and then i'm just going to flip it over and then i'm going to fan the other side too And once both sides are fanned, I'm just gonna scoop it all into one corner, just like this. Just so I can reserve it for later. I'm just gonna add a damp cloth over it, and that will make sure that it retains the same moisture level it has now and doesn't dry out the rice while you're waiting. And this way you can keep it for about three to four hours. All right, so just put that damp cloth over your sushi rice. and then just press it lightly against it. Okay, there we go. All right, so once you fan the rice, you're gonna to wanna to leave it to set for about five to 10 minutes. This is very important because otherwise it just, the rice doesn't stick to each other itself very well. And instead it will just stick to anything like your hands and it'll be really hard to use. So just leave it to set for five to 10 minutes and then it'll be great for molding into nigiri pieces or sushi rice uh, inside of rolls or whatever you want. Now, also another great tip, uh, if you want to handle it with your hands, you take a little bowl of water and you add half water, half rice vinegar, and then you just dip your hands in that, clap off the excess moisture, and then you can pick up the sushi rice. And it sort of develops a, a thin barrier of liquid between the rice and your hand. It doesn't really stick to your hand very well. So that's great for if you want to just mold the rice and then let go of it without sticking all over your hand. Now. Another note, if you don't have one of these hangiri things, then you can just use any other plastic thing that has a lot of surface area that you can just do the same sort of action. Now, obviously, it's much nicer if you get to use one of these hangiris, but, you know, if you don't have, then don't kill yourself trying to get one. Also, uh, hangiris come in different qualities. This is a very cheap one. As you can tell, the metal things aren't really attached to the wood. Uh, they're just decoration. And after a while, the wood will warp and the bottom basically falls out. 
which is a nice feature of the cheap ones, I must say. Okay, uh, okay. Now the good quality ones, uh, they're made of proper wood and they last much longer, but they cost a lot more. They're in the hundreds instead of, you know, 20. You know, this is pretty good for home use. If you want to use it a couple times and you take care of it, the wood won't really fall out. But if you use it too much, this will happen. So if you want one for life, then get the good one. If you want just to use a couple times at home, hobby sort of thing, then just get the cheap one and you know, it'll do the job. Okay, so thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And please check out some more of my sushi recipes and use this sushi rice recipe to make those. Check out all my other videos there and there's lots of sushi recipes to try. Thank you for watching. See you guys next week. Goodbye.